Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a portfolio that pays your bills. The content that will be discussed is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. In today's video I'm going to explain why I, the owner of the biggest and most popular pie on Trading 2 and 2, will never make a pie again. Well, unless there's some serious changes to the pie library and the pie creation system which I'll explain now. So why won't I make another pie on Trading 2 on 2? Well firstly the whole pie library system is broken or was neglected shortly after it was created and that's understandable as Trading 2 on 2 had a sudden influx of users and had to close its doors for almost a year or perhaps a year or so, I'm not exactly sure of the details. So with that in mind I'm sure that a tangential feature on the platform was not the highest priority since then and they're working on other features more central to the actual service that Trading 2 on 2 offers. Still, the system is not working as well as I believe it could in an optimal way, and here are the biggest issues I have with it. Number 1. How making a pie actually functions. If you copy a pie, and way too many people don't get this simple idea, you are copying at the time you select a copy and therefore current prices. Therefore, constructing a pie based on value investing is incredibly pointless. The price of the stocks may be very attractive at the time of creating the pie, and that's fine for the creator but not good for copiers or for reinvesting particularly. Again, as prices change each time the market opens, so does the yield of the portfolio, so claiming you have a 5% yielding portfolio may not be the case months later, therefore making that style of pie portfolio redundant unless you're frequently updating. In fact, this is one advantage that eToro has over Trading 2 and 2, and their copying system is vastly superior for live and dynamic portfolios, and I'll link mine in the description of this video as an example so you can see what I mean. Secondly, I also believe that choosing individual stocks for a pie based on a percentage weighting is not optimal, as these things change every day the market opens, so the percentage of the portfolio barely matters. If you look at a fund manager, they're not saying they specifically want X amount of Coca-Cola shares in their portfolio, they buy up the amount of shares they want and then calculate the percentage they own of it. This again changes as the prices change and they buy more. Again, this is one of the cases where eToro portfolio copying slightly beats out Trading 2 on 2. It would make more sense designating a percentage to a sector, like say 15% in financials, but Trading 2 on 2 doesn't let you do that at present. What does make sense is to set a percentage of ETFs as they're not really dependent on price to the degree that stocks are. However, if I was going to make a portfolio of ETFs, then I'd be making it on Invest Engine as it's a superior platform if you only want to invest in ETFs. I'll link that in the description too so you can see what I mean on that one as well. So how to fix this? What would be super cool is a new feature which is essentially like a pie within a pie. So for example you want 20% of your portfolio in REITs or real estate investment trusts. You create a REIT pie with all your favourite picks and put the best choices in it and weight it however you like. You don't invest into that pie but instead you make a pie of pies so it would be 20% REITs, 40% index funds or however you wanted it. Some sort of aggregate super pie which I believe they do allow you to do with M1 Finance over in the US. Point two, maintaining a pie is not worth it for anyone. I have the biggest pie on Trading 2 on 2. At the time of writing it has over 53,000 copiers, which is 10x the number of copiers as the next biggest, most popular pie. And this almost daily dividends pie also gets several questions from copiers a day, even after providing an FAQ that covers the answers to the majority of questions. You might expect there to be some financial compensation for essentially providing a service for a non-insignificant number of Trading 2 on 2's customers. Actually, I have to laugh when some, let's say, less intellectually gifted people come onto Trading212 feed or the YouTube channel and complain how I'm scamming everyone and accuse me of getting a free share for every copy of the pie. If that was the case, well, let's just say I'll be retired by now. In fact, you only get a free share if a new person signs up via your pie link, which is obviously essentially never, as you would most likely discover the pie only after you've already signed up, and then it's very unlikely. That being said, I do get compensation if you sign up to the platform and then use the promo code DIVXP or D-I-V-E-X-P in the way I describe in this video that I'll put up in the top corner of the screen now. You get 10 days to enter the code after you sign up, so that's nice if you unfortunately missed out and didn't use the link. The other amusing accusation I get is that I only want people to read the FAQ so that I get money from the adverts, and this is funny to me because I genuinely made the FAQ because I was sick of answering the same exact questions every couple of days. Didn't seem to put people off asking them though, as they seemingly refused to read the FAQ before posting. And this is how much I receive from AdSense, which is the ad platform, from the advertisements you see on the FAQ. 
as we are being transparent here and I feel like showing you so you get a better perception of what it's like. So that is about 16 or 17 pound over the course of a month for that. Anyway, back to the point I was trying to make. My pie is the number one biggest pie on the platform and even I had to put in hours and hours of extra time in order to make a whole FAQ on it to even begin to earn around £16 a month from it. Now I'm sure you can imagine what pies that are at least 10 times smaller are likely to make in comparison, and you can probably see why the majority of pies are either completely unmaintained and abandoned, or the owners just decide to delete them to save themselves the trouble. If we scroll through the top pies on the system right now, it's very clear that the top pies section is a disaster. Let me show you. Okay, first is my pie, as you know. Second is an ARK Innovation Pie, which I'm really surprised is still running now, as ARK ETFs used to be incredibly popular, but not so much now for probably obvious reasons. You can also invest in the actual real ETF on other platforms rather than this makeshift one that lags what it's trying to do anyway. So credit and respect to Truba for keeping it relatively frequently updated, but personally I don't see the point nor why it's the second most popular pie on the list in 2023. Briscoe's pie has never really been designed for people to copy it, but more that he's just showing it to accompany his channel to show people what he's investing in. He hasn't made videos as much recently, and I don't know if he updates this pie, but he's pretty clear that people should take their own risk if they want to copy it, and he doesn't encourage it necessarily. 12 months of dividends description is that it pays dividends for each month of the year, which isn't an overly difficult thing to do, and then offers absolutely no other description or justification for choosing the stocks in this pie, so it surprises me that 7,600 people have invested in this one. These two are relics from 2020 when everyone was buying green energy stocks and EV stocks etc. The first one here must have lost a lot of investor capital according to the comments in the pie, and yet it's still ranking pretty high on the leaderboard. Ultra Green Energy even admits that it hasn't been updated for two years, so it's a mystery why anyone would invest in this one, especially some of the components are apparently no longer being traded on the exchange, so you're just asking for trouble if you invest in this one. As you can see, there isn't much incentive for these pie owners to update their pies, or even maintain them really, and answer investors' questions. So the leaderboard is basically a ghost town at this point. So the top section is mostly abandoned, now let's look at the other category headings. Point 3. There is a big problem with the new tab too. Many new users searching for a pie may well look at the top tab, see that they're mostly abandoned, and then try the new tab to see if there's anything there for them to start off with. Well there's a big problem with the new tab too, in that you as a pie creator only have 7 days to get as many people as possible to invest in your pie before it essentially vanishes into the abyss forever. The way the algorithm on the new tab works is that exciting things that promise high returns or high dividends especially, no consideration if they are safe dividends or likely to continue paying, just high yield, and then once those 7 days are over, your pie disappears and will never ever get enough views or copiers to touch the top pies, unless a significant number of pie owners decide to delete their pies. This means that some very irresponsible ideas or investing pies are promoted in the new tab, and the owner is likely to just give up after 7 days anyway. Top is abandoned, and new only has a limited time to get followers. How about the other categories? Point number 4. The other categories suck. For those being on the platform, they may not be aware of how the categories came into being. Originally the pies were all just on one feed, completely unorganised and just ranked by the algorithm of views, comments and copiers. It became very messy, so Trading212 came up with the categories, and it seemed like they were never updated since. So now you get categories like ARC, EV and Green Energy, which are basically redundant now, but based on the pies that Trading212 had, rather than what they should be organised into. Personally, I'd like to see a complete overhaul of these categories, and make it easier to actually land your pie into one of these categories. For example, if you had to specify if your pie is for dividends or speculative penny stocks, I think that would be really helpful for investors looking for a pie to copy. On a similar note, the pie feature really needs a search feature. This would solve the problem with the new tab and the categories in one, as it would be actually possible to find alternative pies that are not abandoned ones on the top. Search could work by looking at the characteristics of the pie, and these could be the categories and tags that you add to them manually, could be through components of the pie, this could be through searching for pies that contain this ticker AAPL, Apple, or something like that. Or the performance features of the pie. So will I be maintaining my pie in the future? Making a video like this, or making any video, or doing anything these days really, I'm inevitably going to get questions of people asking if I'll continue maintaining the pie. And I can't guarantee that if I'm honest. For now it's entertaining for me, and is a good hobby in a sense, so I'll maintain it for as long as that is the case. 
However, as I've said earlier and in updated videos before, it's not really a good ROI for my time, realistically, so although I enjoy it, there are other things I could do with my time if training 212 don't fix some of these problems. It is also annoying getting pestered about it by people who actively decide not to read the FAQ and still ask the same questions, or worse, complain about it not paying out the dividends, despite them just not investing long enough yet. The vast majority of copies are quality though, and the community around the pie is easily the best on trading 212. And on top of that, the dividend cult has been one of the best things I've done on my channel, and there'll be some big things coming in relation to that coming towards the end of this year, hopefully. So if you have interest in joining, then you'd be very welcome to sign up and introduce yourself over there. You get to enjoy the benefits of membership, as well as knowing that you're helping to support the pie. Will I be making pies in the future? I'll only be making pies on Trading212 if they take into account some of the suggestions I made in this video and improve the system. I seriously doubt they'll watch this video, so I don't mean that they need to take all my demands, but I'm sure that some of you feel the same way about the feature. The other reason I would make and maintain a pie is if it's requested by the Dividend Cult members that wanted a pie for a specific purpose, and Cult members get priority on all such requests. If it's not worth maintaining the biggest pie on the platform, it certainly isn't worth making a smaller pie that disappears off the face of the earth in 7 days. So where will I be making pies? So although my current plan is to maintain the almost daily dividend pie for now, and for the foreseeable future unless something changes, I'm not planning to make additional pies on Trading212. I will also be still running the main dividend experiment portfolio over on eToro, no change there, though some improvements and more frequent content for copiers over there in the future. And if I make a dividend ETF or ETF pie, and there is some demand for that from viewers, then I'll be using Invest Engine to do that most likely. I hope that clears up for those who've been asking about making other pies and other similar queries. What do you think about these suggestions? Is there anything else that you'd like to add to improve the pie library features? List them in the comments below. If you liked this video, and if you made it this far, I'm guessing you probably did, then I have some good news for you. I'm giving away my PDF guide to the 10 dividend investing commandments, or the criteria that I use to pick dividend paying stocks, and I'm giving it away to you for free. All you need to do is submit your email in the link below and it'll get delivered to your inbox straight away. Again, that's for free. But that's not the only benefit of joining the email. You also get updates on the almost daily dividend portfolio, interesting stock ideas or news, and special deals and free stuff that I can share with you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. See you.